Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, one word, all caps, will get you 10% off orders of $10 or more at Flipside Gaming, Original Magic Art, and orders of singles at Multizone. If they don't have what you're looking for, you could check out TCG Player and use my affiliate link to help support the channel. Looking for a way to bling out your deck and not spend a fortune? Alter Sleeves can help with that, and you can help with the channel at the same time by using my affiliate link. Or, if you're looking to join the Goblin Gang, you can always support me through Patreon. Today's game is a bit of an old one, but with a new friend, and we have George joining us playing Xenagos. He keeps an impervious Great Worm, Hunter's Prowess, Chromatic Lantern, Rhythm of the Wild, Snow-Covered Forest, Snow-Covered Mountain, and Scrying Sheets. Trevor is playing Elish Norn, Keeping of Plains, Pearl Medallion, Treasure Map, Emeria the Sky Ruin, Finale of Glory, and Decree of Justice. Mike is playing his Gave deck, Keeping Reflecting Pool, Command Tower, Overgrown Tomb, Swamp, Forest, Dire Fleet Ravager, and Hunting Wilds. Matt is playing his Sizen deck, Keeping a Howling Mine, Four Swamps, Thought Vessel, and Megrim. Matt wins the die roll and starts us off. Matt plays a Swamp, passing. George plays a Snow-Covered Forest and casts a Llanowar Elves. Mike plays a tapped Overgrown Tomb. Trevor plays a tapped Marius Sky Ruin, passing. Matt plays a Swamp and pays 2 mana for a Thought Vessel. George plays a Snow-Covered Mountain and pays 3 mana for a Rhythm of the Wilds. Mike plays a tapped Canopy Vista. Trevor plays a Plains and casts Pearl Medallion. Matt plays another Swamp, and two mana gets him a Howling Mine. He then pays two more for Liliana's Caress, passing to George. George draws his two and plays a Scrying Sheets. He taps his lands for Chromatic Lantern, passing. Mike draws two and plays Command Tower. He has nothing to cast, discarding down to seven and taking two from the Caress. Trevor happily draws and plays a Plains. He casts Ram's Expertise, making some servo tokens, and gets to cast his treasure map for free. Matt draws two and plays a Swamp. He then casts Sizen in his main phase, passing to George. George draws his extra cards and takes two from Sizen. He plays a Kessig Wolfron as his land drop before bringing out Xenagos in his main phase. Moving to combat, the Lanawar Elves get a bit of a buff, and they go swinging at Trevor. Trevor blocks with two of the Servos and trades with the Elf. George then has to discard down to 7, losing 2 as he pitches a card. Mike draws his extras and takes 2 from Sizen and moves to his main phase, playing a Reflecting Pool. He casts Hunting Wilds to go and find 2 forest cards for the field, putting in a Temple Garden and a basic forest. He then moves to his end step, discarding down to 7 and losing 4 life from pitching 2 cards to get down to 7. Trevor loses 2 to Sizen for drawing, and plays a Plains. He casts Legion's Landing, gaining a 1-1 white vampire token with lifelink, and he casts Skull Clamp. He equips the clamp onto the last servo, drawing 2 more cards. He then passes, having exactly 7 in hand. Matt draws, and plays Urborg as his land drop. 5 mana gets him a painful quandary, and he passes to George. George draws half of a new hand, losing 2 to Sizen's ability. He plays a snow-covered mountain for his land drop, and taps 6 mana for a Hydra Omnivore, which has George forced to resolve the painful quandary trigger. He decides to discard a card, and takes 2 from Liliana's Caress. The Omnivore then resolves, and George moves to combat. He puts the Xenagos trigger on the Hydra, which once the trigger hits the stack, has Matt responding after Mike and Trevor pass priority. Matt decides to cast Snuff Out, losing 4 life rather than paying for the spell, and destroys the Hydra. 
George then moves through his phases, discarding down to seven, losing two life to the caress as he pitches a card. Mike draws his four, losing two to Sizen. He plays a Sun Petal Grove as his land drop, and while Mike is thinking about what to do, Trevor scries using his treasure map. Mike does cast a Wood Elves, discarding a card to the Quandry, but still takes two from the Caress. He grabs a Forest, which comes in, and then plays out Falcon Wrath Noble, discarding another card and losing another two. Trevor draws his cards and loses two, playing a Plains in his main phase. He casts Knight of the White Orchid and goes to grab a Plains card. He remembers he needs to discard a card, ditching Captain of the Watch and taking two from the Caress. We then see a main phase return to dust, exiling the Caress and the Quandry, with Trevor discarding Hour of Reckoning to the Quandry trigger and taking two from the Caress before they're exiled. With nothing else, Trevor passes. Matt draws his cards and plays a Cabal Coffer as his land drop. He activates it for seven black mana, casting Price of Knowledge. Matt then pays three more mana for Master of the Feast and passes to George. George untaps and on his upkeep, Stacks his triggers to resolve the price one first, losing seven. He then draws his cards from Sizen, losing two more, and then draws for turn. He plays a Rootbound Crag and casts a Soul Ring. Sneak Attack then joins the other permanents, and he activates it by paying one red to put out an archetype of aggression. He has the Riot trigger put a plus one plus one counter onto it, and then uses Sneak Attack to put out the Impervious Great Worm for only one red. He has its Riot trigger also give it a plus one plus one counter. Moving to combat, the Great Worm gets the Xenagos trigger, and George swings both creatures at Matt. Matt puts both of his creatures in front of the Great Worm, but still takes a huge chunk of damage, dropping to eight. With Matt's creatures dying, Mike drains Matt with the Noble twice. George then casts a Sakura Tribe Elder in his second main phase, and at his end step, sacrifices the two creatures he cheated out with sneak attack. This has Mike draining Matt for another two with a noble seeing the creatures die. Mike loses his seven, he draws for turn, and plays an opal palace. While Trevor uses the treasure map to scry one and bottoms a card, adding another counter to the map. Mike then taps two for a sword of the anime, and gears up the wood elves. He swings the elf at George, who blocks with the elder. George then sacrifices it before damage is dealt to go and find a basic, while Mike does something similar, finding a basic from attacking with the sword. Mike also gets to drain Matt for one with a noble from seeing the elder die, and with nothing else, he passes. On Trevor's upkeep, responding to the price trigger, he activates the treasure map to scry one. He gets the third counter added to it, transforming it into Treasure Cove and gaining him three treasures. Trevor then takes six and draws his cards for turn. He plays a Plains and goes to combat. He hits George for two with the Knight, and in his second main phase, plays out a hero with a Blade Hold and passes to Matt. Matt draws and thankfully doesn't take damage from his own price of knowledge. Wound Reflection then hits the field after Matt activates his Cabal Coffers, and he follows up with a Grey Merchant of Ashvidel to get his life total back to a respectable level. It enters, and Matt has Devotion to Black of 4. This has his opponents losing 4 life, while Matt gains 12. Matt then passes, and at the end of turn, Wound Reflection has his opponents lose another 4 life. George loses 5 on his upkeep from the price trigger, and draws his cards. He casts Domri Raid in his main phase, and once the walker resolves, upticks him and looks at his top card. It's not a creature, so it stays on top. Mana is tapped for a Mana Gorger Hydra, which comes in with a plus one plus one counter from the Riot trigger. Moving to combat, George has Xenagos pump the Hydra with its trigger, and swings the Hydra and Xenagos at Matt. Matt puts Gary in front of Xenagos, taking the four from the Hydra. With the zombie dying, Mike drains Matt for one. In his second main phase, George then plays Relentless Assault, which gives the Hydra a plus one plus one counter, and then untaps his creatures for another combat step. He then moves to the next beginning of combat, putting the Xenagos trigger on the Hydra once more. It's now big enough to take Matt out, which George is quick to do. This works out for Matt anyway, since he's gotta head out in five minutes. Mike sadly draws only one card, and casts Slaughter the Strong. This has George sacrificing the active Xenagos, 
and Trevor sacrificing the Knight of the White Orchid so he's able to keep the Hero of the Blade hold. Mike then gets to train George with the Noble Triggers twice. We then see a Dire Fleet Ravager come in and cuts everyone's life total by a third rounded up. Moving to combat, Mike swings all out to take out George. Mike then passes, and at the end of turn, Trevor cycles Decree of Justice and puts three into the X to make some tokens and also draws a card. Trevor's turn has him casting Elish Norn in his main phase, which takes out both of Mike's creatures as she enters. Mike does get to train Trevor for two with the Noble scene itself and the Elves dying, but it's not enough to keep him alive when Trevor swings all out at Mike, which includes the hero of Bladehold, who pumps everything with Battlecry. Game review time. So this was a quick one, as often a Xenagos or a sizing game tends to be. I really do love Matt's Sizen deck. I think it's basically all the things that I enjoy about Nekasar, except without being Nekasar. It can also be relatively budget friendly, assuming you're ignoring the Cabal Coppers and other expensive black cards, since you only have to have one color mana base. I can't remember if George has been on the channel or not. I think he has actually, so this probably wasn't his first appearance. I just can't go back through all the other games to find his first one though. I don't really have much to say about a Xenagos deck, other than the fact that it seemed to do a lot of damage, which is what Xenagos wants to do. Mike unfortunately seems to always flood out with lands and games on camera. I don't know why. I do think he did a pretty good job of closing out on George in the end, but unfortunately he left him in a very vulnerable position, which as we saw, basically allowed Trevor to win as soon as he casted his commander. Speaking of Elish Norn, I think this is probably the first time a mono white deck has won on my channel. I could be wrong though. At the very least, I think it probably was the first time that Decree of Justice got there for someone and helped them close out the game. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.